Hello everyone, today we will be learning five different functions that are a must for anyone who is starting to learn OpenCV. So let's get started. The first thing we will do is we will import CV2. And the first function we are going to learn is our <coughs> grayscale image. So we are going to take in a regular image and we will convert it into grayscale. In order to do that, we will require an image. So we will say img is equals to cv2.imread. We will read the image from our directory. Uh, in fact, let's define a path which will be resources slash linum dot png we will define this as our path and then we will do i am show uh, sorry cv2 dot i am show and we will define it as lena and we will say that we want to display our image so uh, we will add the weight key and we will say infant so if I run this now, we will see our basic image. So what if we want to convert it into grayscale? So if we are using uh, the imread function, you can simply write zero in front of it and run it again and it will convert it into grayscale. But what if we are using a webcam um, or what if we are uh, if we don't want to use uh, right away this functionality so what we can do is we can later on convert our image to gray by writing the function cvt color and in that we will say that we want to convert the image our original image into cvt um, no, sorry cv2 dot color and here we have a couple of options uh, in which we can convert it into different color spaces but the one we are going to use is bgr to gray so opencv actually uses bgr convention instead of rgb that's why we have the bgr to gray scale <clears throat> so now if we run it again without the zero it should give us uh, this is the original image so we need to declare another one this time we will say grayscale and we will copy our image gray and we will paste it here and run it <coughs> so this time we can see that we are able to convert it into grayscale so <coughs> the next function we are going to use is uh, for adding blur to an image so there are many different ways of adding blur but the most simplest one is using the Hossian method. So we will declare our image as image blur. And we will add the Hossian blur by simply typing Hossian. <coughs> now it takes in parameters uh, in terms of the image. So we will use our gray image and then it requires <coughs> the dimension of the kernel. Uh, which we will use 5 by 5 and then it requires the Sigma value so you don't need to know all the details of what they are all you need to know is that um, this kernel of 5 by 5 can only be in odd numbers and uh, if you increase it your blurriness will increase as well so let's see what happens if we run it and write image blur and here we will write image blur so as you can see we have a significant difference in the actual image and the blurred image so as I mentioned earlier if you increase the size of the kernel the blurriness will increase as well so as you can see the blurness has increased so next we will move on to an edge detector which is very important and is 
is the basis of a lot of different projects that involve OpenCV and Python. So the first thing we will do is we will declare our image as image canny and then we will use the cv2.canny function cv2 dot yeah the c has to be big canny function we will enter our image so let's say we will enter our blur image this time and um, we are going to set our threshold parameters this is the first parameter and this is the second threshold that you can add so let's see what happens next so let's enter the image canny and we will say this is image canny so let's run that so you can see we have now an image that is showing edges of the main original image when converted into grayscale now if we want to increase uh, the amount of detections of the edge we can change our threshold parameters we can increase them and decrease them so for example if you do 50 by 50 you will see a lot more edges and if you want a good amount um, with some good features link um, you can have a hundred by 200 again this is just um, a relative number for this image but uh, for for any other application you might have different values so you have to figure out the correct value for your image now later on once we have this Kenny image uh, once we have these edges what we can do with them is we can increase their size and we can decrease their size and uh, this in the technical terms we call it as dilation and erosion so we will first dilate this image so we will use image dilation and dilation is equals to cv2 dot dilate now we are going to dilate our image canny and we are going to use a kernel this time now what is a kernel a kernel is basically a matrix that we use to go through iterate through the image itself to actually perform a function now uh, if you want to learn more detail you can go on their website and go into the theory of it but for this uh, tutorial we are going to actually look at the implementation part more so in order to declare uh, a matrix we are going to import our numpy library import numpy as np and we are going to declare our kernel so we'll say kernel is equals to np dot once now this will uh, have a, uh, this will declare a kernel that will have the values of ones so how big do we want the size of the kernel we want it five by five and you can also declare uh, what is the type uh, of the data that is stored in this kernel or in this matrix so in our case we will say we need integers integers of 8 bits and we're gonna make them unsigned okay so uh, if you don't understand uh, we can print it out and we can see what it looks like so let's see the kernel itself so you can see here we have a 5 by 5 matrix of ones so that's what that's what it's doing so we will declare our kernel here uh, we will write it down kernel and then we will tell it how many times we need to iterate so we will say iterations is equals to one so we will iterate one time so we will declare another one for the uh, the dilation And let's run it so now we can compare it with the actual canny image so here you can see that the actual thickness of the lines have increased 
uh, in their respective directions. So what happens if we iterate it further? Let's say we iterate it three times. So now you can see the effect of the dilation is much more. So this way you can have more or less uh, effect of the function. Then the last one we are going to do is the reverse of dilation, which is erosion. So we will do image eroded is equals to CV2 dot erosion uh, dot erode. And we are going to say image. Now, if we, uh, if we use our Kenny image, uh, it is already very thin. And uh, if we reduce it further, we might not see anything. So we will use the dilated image and we will use the same kernel that we have used before and we will use the iterations as one so if we keep this as a one and we declare our erosion image and if we run it now we can see this is the effect of erosion coming from the dilation image so <coughs> It, it, it will not be exactly the same as the previous image which is the actual original canny image but you can see it, it tries to thin out all the edges uh, in their respective directions so again if we if we do it furthermore if we for example do it twice the iteration you can see not a lot of information is left behind so these functions can be very useful um, in, in a lot of different projects. It can be very useful to have it in your pipeline to actually pre-process image, to find objects, to track them, uh, to, to detect their locations. And we can have a lot of different features getting out of uh, these functions. So that's it for this video. Uh, one, one thing to note here is that we have almost one, two, three, four, five, six images and uh, it, it gets messy at times when you want to see the result of your, if you, your project. So w later on we are going to learn how to put all of these images together in, in one screen, in one window, uh, without writing a lot of code. So stay tuned for that and uh, I will see you in the next video.